We're going to be talking about grading for a path. So the first thing that you need to do is establish the slope that you want to use. Now we know that anything above a 5% slope is considered a ramp and you're going to need handrails. So for the purpose of this exercise, we're going to stay beneath 5% and I've chosen to do a 4% slope. So as per usual, we're going to use our equation slope is equal to rise over run and swap that round because our unknown in this case is the run since we know our slope and between each contour there is a one foot rise. So by flipping it around we get run is equal to rise over slope or 1 over 0 0.04 for the 4% which gives us a 25 foot run. So how do we apply that to creating a 4% path? Well, I've taken my little graphic scale that I have here and I've put it on a little sheet of paper so that I can move it around easily. And you'll see why that'll be, why that'll be useful in a second. Now since the contour numbers are facing me, it means that this side is the downhill side of the hill and this side is the uphill side. So in this exercise, we're trying to go from the road to the dock or more specifically from point A to point B with a 4% slope. So how do we go about that? We're going to take our little graphic scale and on it you'll notice that I have a little spot for 25 feet and I just need to go between, and I'm just going to assume that uh, A is at uh, 239 foot elevation, so I'm going to need 25 feet in between those. So I'm going to put my zero at point A and then rotate my little piece of paper until the 25 hits my contour line and I'm going to make a little mark. And then I'm going to do that again from this point here and I'm going to make a little mark on this contour. So that means that I have 25 feet between each contour. Now you'll notice you could do this in two directions. So I could also go put my zero here and make my mark here. And that'll mean that my path is going this way instead of taking a curve. So here I can trace it along as we go. So you'll start to see what we're getting at. So that would be the center line for my path. Right, and as I was saying, you could go in uh, another direction, so I could draw this line here and so on, um, but you do want to keep in mind where you're headed. So you never want to end up just going off to the side forever, you want to keep your goal in mind. So I'm going to go ahead and trace the rest of my little 25 foot lines. Alright, so now I've established a center line for my path and I've successfully gone from point A to point B with no less than 25 feet between each uh, foot rise. So as you can see at the end here, I have a little bit more than 25 feet, I have 30 feet, so that's okay. Instead of having a 4% slope, it's a slightly lesser slope. So what I'm going to do now is to offset my path because I just have the center line, but I would like to give this path some width. So I'm going to create a five foot path. And as I have my little scale, I'm just going to use this distance and more or less eyeball where the middle is on that point. Right there. And then place little dots on either side so that I can then take my sliding ruler and offset it. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that for the entirety of my path. Okay, so now that I have the offset of my path, I can go ahead and round the corner. corner. Um, this is an optional thing to do, but uh, I think it looks nicer, looks more path-like, and in practice people tend to want to cut the corners anyways, so if you have hard corners you're probably going to end up with people cutting across them. So we'll just go ahead and round most of these off.
So now that we have our path, we're going to need to regrade the terrain a little bit to make sure that our path is flat. So as you can see, there's some locations, like here for example, where it's not the current contours are not perpendicular to the path, which would mean that you would have quite a, a significant cross slope. And even though you might want somewhat of a cross slope to help with drainage, uh, this would probably be way too much. And at this scale, we're not going to see our cross slope, so we're just going to assume that our contours fall perpendicular onto the path. So if I start here, I go to where the contour meets the center line, and I'm going to draw a line across the path, and that'll be our new contour line. So I'm going to do that for all of them before I go ahead and connect them all back. Now when you're at a corner, uh, you're going to want to bisect your corner, and that's quite easy because we still have these leftover sort of construction lines from when we offset the path. So if I just connect those two points, that should be the bisecting line of that corner. Oh, got stuck. So right there. Alright, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that for all of my intersections. Now that I have my new contours, I'm going to need to connect them back to the existing ones. So here I would just take it from the edge of the path and pull it back to the existing contour. There. And then I mark where it reconnects with some little tabs. Alright, and once you've done that, you're pretty much good to go. So I'm just going to clean up this drawing a little bit so that it reads well, and then you should be done. And just like that, you've been able to draw a 4% slope from A, from A to B, 5 foot width, and regraded contours.